of researching. We're going to, um, the clip we're going to show in a minute here actually goes into the U.S. congressional hearings as Dr. Carpenter was one of the people that testified. But back at the end of September, they had, you know, cell phone safety, um, you know, and had people from all industries come in, researchers, you know, that have reviewed the studies and data. Um, cell phone industry neglected um, to appear. They didn't want to be involved with it. And so, um, out of um, the research, um, Dr. Herberman from the University of Pittsburgh came up with a bunch of tips um, to minimize your exposure and risks. And Dr. Carpenter is actually one of the other doctors who testified that's going to be on this clip. So, Well, good, because there is some official denial that, the, that these things are oh, yeah. a problem. Yeah. And as I tell people, you know, there are some very strong lobbies by the telecommunications industry and, and they basically control what is said about them. As a matter of fact, to recount another personal experience, I was in France recently, my daughter has moved there, and uh, I happened to meet a woman named Annie Lobet, who is a French uh, scientific researcher who has written several books on the dangers of cell phones and EMF and towers and all that. And she has been sued by the French telecommunications industry. Mm -hmm. for saying that they're dangerous. And uh, she was very frightened, as a matter of fact, when I met her. And uh, uh, was kind of speaking in hushed tones and, you know, looking over her shoulder. And, yeah, there is some official denial that this is a problem. But there is research available. Yes, and we'll, especially we'll be in uh, Scandinavia that. and some other European mm -hmm. countries that show the dangers of these things. So. Yeah. Why don't I quickly play the clip and then we'll launch yes. into the research. An unusual warning out today about your cell phone and cancer, that you should be very careful and your kids basically shouldn't really be using them at all. One researcher puts it this way, do you want to play Russian roulette with your brain? This warning comes after the director of the University of Pittsburgh Cancer Institute sent a blunt message to his faculty and his staff saying that everybody, especially children, should limit their cell phone use because of the possible risk of brain cancer. Dr. David Carpenter is one of the experts who signed this letter of warning. He is the director of the Institute for Health and the Environment at the University of Albany. Doctor, thank you for being here. This does seem unprecedented and unusual. Why issue this warning? I mean, is it tied to some research that has yet to come out? Well, there's been a, a fair bit of recent years, but the evidence is growing. It still isn't absolutely proven, but when you use a cell phone, the radio frequency that carries the information is the same kind of, of radio frequency that dries your microwave oven, that will cook your potato. Now, our standards are set to uh, avoid excessive heating, as you would have in a microwave oven. But results from Scandinavia particularly, and also now a new study from Israel, show that people that use cell phones regularly for 10 years or more are more likely to get brain tumors, tumors of the parotid gland, the salivary gland that's on the side of the face, or tumors of the auditory nerve uh, than people that do not use cell phones. I hate to say it, Doc, uh, but you... We you... Know that you sound like you just described almost all of us. I mean, are we looking potentially at an epidemic of brain cancer? Precisely. That's what our concern is. And rather than repeat the dangers that we, uh, the problems that we had with smoking and lung cancer, we feel, those of us in the public health community, that at least we need to send the message out now. You can't walk down the street without seeing every 10-year-old on their right. cell phone. It's a status symbol. It's something that's cool, and uh, kids are spending enormous times on cell phones. Uh, and it's really with the kids' brain. Be, yeah, because their brain's developing? Their brain's developing, but also their brain is smaller, and therefore the exposure to a child's brain is greater than that is in an adult's brain. Doctor, we just have about 30 seconds the, left, but what do you suggest that people do? Cell phones are not going away. We're also tied to them. How do we use them safely? I mean, you basically say don't have your kids use them unless it's an emergency, but, but for adults, how do we use them? Well, use a landline when you can. When you use a cell phone, get the, the generator away from your body. Just a little ways will make a, long diff a lot of difference. Uh, don't use cell phones when you can use a landline. Respect the fact that radiofrequency radiation may cause very serious diseases. 
Mm. Dr. David Carpenter, University of Albany. Uh, very interesting stuff today, Doc. Thank you. Of course, all of our kids wanted cell phones, and they all have them, and they all use them, and now I'm thinking, hmm. That'll get your attention. It sure uh, will. You know, they have said that in the past, if you listen closely, when those studies come out, they say there's no direct link. For years, there's no direct link. But at the bottom of those studies, they always say, you know what you should probably do is use the earpiece and keep them away from your body. And now it sounds like some of these doctors, anyway, are now starting to coalesce around the argument that it better be safe than sorry. And they haven't been around that long, really. Right. All right. Well, that's a pretty powerful clip that we just watched, full of really valuable information. I wonder, uh, Susan, if you could tell us a bit more about the, uh, some of the biological aspects of this, the symptoms and... Uh yeah, we'll definitely launch into the research. People who um, have microwave syndrome or um, electromagnetic sensitivity often experience everything from, you know, the sleep problems, mem you know, partial memory issues, um, lack of focus, body aches and pains. Um, they also have um, poor concentration, irritability, um, fatigue. <laughs> Um, you know, some people have it down to the point of, you know, more exhaustion from the whole um, experience. And it's interesting, over in Europe and several other countries throughout the world, they've actually issued, you know, warnings and advisories um, saying children and pregnant women should not use cell phones. At all. At, except in emergency situations. Wow. Now, it's also important to keep in mind that, you know, the pregnant woman shouldn't be carrying that microwave transmitting device on their body. Mm -hmm. And there's been some studies that link it to the increase in autism rate, too. Because you think about it, developing brain, rapidly developing cells right next to a microwave transmitter, it, it's just not a, a good thing. It's not thing. just cell phones, either. It's uh... No. All sorts of things. No, and, you know, when we get into the tips, I'll, I'll share some of the things I've mm -hmm. done personally, you know, to kind of minimize the exposure with my family as well as myself. Because I was like, here, talk to Grandma and Grandpa on the cordless phone, on the cell phone. And, you know, we've mm -hmm. since gone back to landlines, and that's yeah. what my kids are going to be talking on. So.